Hi there. How's everybody doing? Good. So I, there, there may have been something lost in translation in the title of this, uh, this presentation. So uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be talking about how to catch your spouse cheating online. So, and half the room didn't clear out, so that's good. So, uh, but uh, I'm actually here to talk about uh, how to increase loyalty, how to increase engagement. Uh, we, we, we like to refer to the, the, this challenge as, as uh, user promiscuity, promiscuity on the internet, and so that's why the, uh, hence the, the, the little mix up there in the, uh, in the title, but uh, I'll dive right in here. So uh, first off, I'll give you a little background on Big Door. It's, uh, it's helpful, I think, for context to kind of understand our perspective and our view on, on things, and specifically on gamification. So uh, we are the most widely used platform. We have over 400 uh, presentations or, or, or implementations, I should say, that have gone live just in the last 12 months. So very widely used. Uh, we're the top choice by consumer brands. How many people saw Chameleon Air talk earlier today? That was great. Uh, so, so he, of course, uses our platform. Uh, a, a number of the big brands that, that use us, I, I think they, they tend to, to view certain uh, 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 platforms that they use as secret weapons and they don't like to necessarily talk about them publicly. So a number of our big brands we don't even talk about publicly. We don't splash their logo all over our site. Uh, I'm actually going to show you some screenshots from some of those guys today, but they're, they're all uh, redacted and so you can't even see uh, what the name is. But if, uh, if you're seeing these, these odd uh, censored looking uh, black marks all over uh, screenshots, that's why that is. So I apologize for that. Uh, but, but, uh, um, but it's important to note that, that what we don't do and what we don't focus on, at least at this point in time, is inside the enterprise or employee-facing type of implementations, uh, but we are very focused on, on uh, implementations that are consumer-facing. So we work with big brands that have consumer-facing implementations. Uh, we currently have about 10 million monthly active users, but just based on our current implementations, uh, by next quarter we'll be about 30 million monthly active users. So we see a lot of users, uh, have a lot of interaction with, uh, with users, and, uh, and therefore get a lot of data and, and hopefully a, a fair amount of insights uh, and bring a rigor to, uh, to, to figuring out what those insights really mean and how we can help a number of our, of our companies that we work with by, by leveraging those best, those best practices. And then uh, and one of the other things that we've really focused on as a, as a platform is being fast to be able to implement. And this is a really, really critical thing. So if you don't get anything else out of what I talk about today, get this one thing that, that, that gamification, and I think there's a, uh, there, there is, there is an, an, an effort underway that, that, uh, that, that isn't going in this direction, and I think it's wrongheaded, and so I'll, I'll make some, some, uh, some bold claims here. But, but as, uh, just in the same way that the lean startup movement is, is very focused on this idea of build, measure, learn, and getting into that, that iteration loop very, very quickly, because, uh, because we can't necessarily go out and, and figure out exactly how something is going to work until we put it out there and get it in front of users and get them actually using it. The same thing I think is true with gamification. We, we hear this all the time certainly in social games that, that, uh, that you have to put a game out there, you have to get some users using it, you start to learn, you start to iterate, and then you start to make improvements upon, upon your game. The same exact thing is true in gamification. So if you have spent more than 90 days thinking about strategizing and planning for gamification and you haven't actually put something out in front of users, I'll make the bold claim that you're doing it wrong. So you really need to be able to get something out quickly, get it out to a small audience, start to build, start to measure, start to learn, start to iterate, and then based on those learnings, then you're going to be able to create something that's actually going to be meaningful for your entire site or for your entire community. So that's one of the things that we've really focused on is, is being able to, uh, to, to create a, a quick, uh, very rapid deployment and implementation and be able to very quickly get you into that, that deploy, measure, learn, uh, iteration loop, and that's really, really critical. And I'll talk a little bit more about that and what that means and, and what the kind of practical implications are of that. Uh, so the problem, the challenge, the, this, is, uh, this is something that, that we see consistently, again, you know, with consumer-facing uh, applications and with, with consumer-facing brands and, 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 app, and, uh, and, and mobile apps, is that is that loyalty is is just uh, yeah, is is terrible in terms of users' loyalty to a particular brand to a particular website on the internet? It's very very low. So one way to measure this is just look at the the average amount of visits that a user takes to a website. So we've taken uh, here for a couple stats here. Uh, we took a look at the the median results for the top 5,000 websites in the U.S. So these are the top 5,000 websites. It gets worse as as you get uh, further down in terms of uh, of overall traffic, but for those top 5,000 websites, on average, their audience is only showing up one and a half times per month. 
And that's just abysmal. That's terrible. These are users that now are connected every single day. They're going and visiting sites every single day. They're just not visiting your site every single day. So we need to fix that. We need to solve that. And if we, if we can't get users to come back, if we can't get them to, to, uh, to at least uh, uh, visit us, then no amount of engagement or anything else is really going to matter. They have to get there first. So that's the first thing we focus on uh, from a metric standpoint is, is how can we get users to come back on a regular basis. And then the second thing is once they're there, what are they actually doing when they're there? Uh, and again, looking at those top, the, the median results for those top 5,000 websites is that, is that on average they're only uh, viewing about five pages per visit. And, that's, and that usually equates to uh, a little less than five minutes per visit as well. And so again, very, uh, very, very poor results generally speaking, and I think they're things that we can have significant improvement upon, and gamification uh, it certainly was our thesis three years ago that gamification can fix this and can go a long way to improve these stats, and I'm happy to say that, uh, that we've proven that that is in fact the case. So that's, that's the problem, that's the setup is, and I, I would imagine that this is something that even if you have numbers that are significantly better than this, you still want them to be better. Uh, if you have numbers that are significantly worse than this, then you want them to be better. What we see consistently is that we are, uh, by using good gamification tactics and strategies, you can have a significant impact on both of these metrics, whether you are significantly above the average already, or if you're significantly below the average, uh, you can have a massive impact on, on those numbers. So the solutions, I'll, I'll give you a little diagram and then what we'll do is we'll dive into some examples and, and look at specifics. So uh, again, the challenge being uh, and, and really the opportunity being increasing loyalty and engagement with, uh, with users. And so we start with onboarding. And this may sound relatively mundane and, and, uh, and, and very tactical, but it's a really, really critical piece of the puzzle. And it's something that I see uh, implementations miss on a lot. And, and if you just put something on your site uh, it is very easy for users to have banner blindness and just miss it entirely and they're not going to pay a lot of attention to it. So if you want to be able to have an impact on users, you have to be, make sure that they're actually seeing it and make sure that they understand it. And so onboarding is a great way and a great, uh, just a, a great mechanic that you can use in order to bring users in, make sure that they feel welcome, make sure that they actually understand what it is that you're, uh, that, that you're about to offer them, make sure that they understand what your, uh, what your gamification is all about, and of course you're not, t uh, you're not referring to it as gamification with your end users, uh, but it should feel natural, it feel, should feel welcoming, and it should also inform and educate uh, the, the user as they, as they come in. And we'll show you some examples of, uh, of what we think is, is good onboarding. Once a user's on board, creating what we call and what we refer to as yearn. And this is, this is really critical. And if you, can, if you can tap into this, where you get to the point where users are yearning for the, the rewards or for the progression or for, uh, or for uh, the, the things that you are offering them by being a part of your site or a part of your app, then that's, that's really, really critical. So we actually measure this. We have a, a number of different algorithms that we use in order to, to try to measure and understand what, what, uh, what kind of yearn do we have from users? What kind of uh, yearn do we, are we creating over maybe a baseline uh, where, uh, where before gamification was implemented? Uh, and then what are the things that we're doing in order to actually impact that and what is creating more yearn and less yearn? And then of course, rewards. And so, and, and, and these two are critically tied to each other. And, and one of the things that I, I love about Chameleon Air uh, if, you, if you heard him earlier, uh, is, is that he has this, this wonderful perspective on, on the relationship between him and his fans. And so, in, 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 in this is one of the things that we see as a big mistake often, uh, is when, when companies come along and they say, I'm going to use gamification in order to get my users to do something. Instead, the way Chameleon Air approaches things, and, and this has been uh, part of our philosophy since day one with our platform, is, is to ask the question in reverse and say, what is in it for the user? And if we can answer that question, if we can give a good answer to that question, all the rest of this stuff is really going to fall into place. Uh, but if we look at it just purely from the perspective, the selfish perspective of me as the company or me as the website, what can I get my users to do? It's gonna be the wrong way to look at it. And so a great way to be able to express to users this is what's in it for you is to give them rewards. And rewards do not have to be uh, expensive items, they don't have to, uh, to break the bank. Uh, I've heard a number of uh, terms this week uh, thrown out like you, you have to feed the beast. Uh, and, uh, and so I'm happy to report that, uh, well, that while that may be true, 
we can eat very, very inexpensive food, and uh, I think we have some, uh, um, some good formulas for, for how to make that happen. Chameleonair showed some of those today that were great and really innovative and really creative, and they can have a huge impact on, on users' behavior, and, uh, and at the same time, they can create massive incentive and massive urine on, on the part of your audience. So once you reward the user, then getting them to be social, uh, and then of course rinse and repeat. And this is, uh, uh, this, is, this is not something that should just happen once, it should be a cycle, it should be something that continues to, uh, to create momentum. Uh, and, and I'll grant you this is an oversimplification, uh, but that's, the, that's what we get in 20 minutes. So let me dive into a couple examples. First, uh, onboarding. So as I mentioned, this can be, uh, this can seem a little bit mundane, but it really, really is a very critical part of the experience. Uh, I, I like to equate it to if, if you invite somebody over to your house, uh, and if you just uh, leave the, the front door ajar and, and hope that they figure it out, they're not going to feel very welcome. So, uh, so you want to greet them at the front door. You want to make sure that they're welcome. You want to make sure you point out uh, uh, you know, where, the, where the refrigerator and where the bathroom is so that they are acquainted with your, with your house, and, and this is no different. So here we see a screenshot of, of Chameleon Air's site. Uh, he showed some of this earlier today, but, the, but there's a welcome screen uh, and a welcome message, and, and, and one of the things that we found is very, very important is not just hitting the user over the head with, a, with an initial message that says, hey, this is what you can do, get by, by being a part of our website, but rather to, to, to do that, but then to also augment it with an ongoing uh, I, uh, kind of experience where the user continues to get subtle messages as they continue to engage in your site. So I'll give you an example of that, that an anonymous user might come to the site, they haven't registered yet, they haven't told you who they are, and so they're going to see an initial message that says, hey, if you participate in this site, and if you, uh, if you engage in this site, then you're gonna earn points that you can redeem for really cool rewards. Isn't that great? User goes, eh. I don't think I'm gonna to decide to do that right now, maybe later. Then they, uh, maybe the next day they come back to the site and they, uh, they leave a comment. As soon as they do something like that that is actually going to be uh, a, a rewardable action, they're gonna get another little message that, hey, you're earning more points. You're still an anonymous user, but we're giving you additional points. Would you like to log in and keep those points? And that, that ongoing iterative uh, uh, messaging to the user I, 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 it's amazing to us to uh, how much we can increase registration rates by just doing some of those subtle things and doing it well and doing it so that it's not disruptive to the experience and it doesn't get too much in their face but at the same time clearly communicates. So here's another example of, uh, of a similar kind of message with another implementation. Here you can see my, my, uh, my beautiful sensor bar there. And, uh, and, and again, it, it customized to look and feel like it is appropriate and, and authentic and part of your site and part of your experience, but at the same time, informing the user about, hey, this is what you're going to get by engaging on my site. There's a million other sites that you can go to. By you giving your time and your attention to me, I'm going to say thank you, and this is how I'm saying thank you. Again, another example here. Uh, this is a kind of a layered message, and it, without the context, it's a little bit hard to see, but there's, uh, there's a little widget that's sitting on the right-hand side of the screen, uh, and out of that widget is coming messaging, uh, and this is the messaging where, where it's reporting to the user that, hey, you just took an action where that earned you some additional points. By the way, if you want to keep those points, you'll want to make sure that you log in and register, and, uh, and of course, each time this happens, you're increasing your registration rates. Oh, one more there. Sorry, I thought it was done. Same, same kind of message. Uh, in this case, uh, they, the users earn 200 points. Still an anonymous user, and again, telling them that, hey, you're doing all these things. You should register. You should keep your points. So that's the onboarding process. And I'll just, uh, one other thing I'll say about that real quick is that, that uh, as, as a part of the onboarding process, the questing mechanism, uh, it doesn't need to be called quest, that may not fit the right context for your, for your site or for your, uh, for your app, but, uh, but whether you call it quests, missions, drives, et cetera, it is, uh, um, it is a, a wonderful way to be able to bring a user on board and to be able to get them accustomed to and, and, uh, and understanding your site. And the idea of saying, uh, hey, here's a page, and I'm going to put a bunch of text on there, and it's going to say, you get 10 points for this action, and 20 points for this action, and 30 points for this action. That is so crass and so ugly, and, and it does not feel authentic to your users. Uh, while you may have somewhere buried deep a page that lists all that, do not rely on that as your primary mechanism to, to explain this. It needs to be much more authentic. It needs to feel like it's, uh, uh, it's much more integrated into the site in order for it to be effective. 
So creating yearn. So here we have a, a, a screenshot of, of, of messaging to the user. And so this is a user who's already registered now. They've logged in. Uh, they saw that they were earning points for their various actions. So they decided to go ahead and register and raise their hand and tell you who they are. And so now as they're taking actions, as they're doing things that you actually care about on your site, then you are, uh, then, then you are thanking them. And, and this is really important where yearn and rewards are, are tied directly together. And so the, the, the goal, and this is one of the things that, that we've discovered uh, over time, is that is that you uh, um, that the reward itself is is the end. The the virtual currency or the points is just a means to the end. But what happens is that as soon as the user starts to associate that, hey, these are the points that I'm I'm earning to be able to get me to my reward, then those those points start to actually take on a life of their own and a real meaning on their own. And so now all of a sudden you have this very very powerful mechanism where you can start to reward and thank users for very small, very iterative types of actions, and they get to feel rewarded as they go along. And then when they take those points and they actually cash them in or redeem them for the reward, then that's very very meaningful uh, part of the overall experience. Here's another example, again, uh, showing a progress indicator and showing to the user that, hey, you're, uh, you know, you're, you're part of the way there. You're going to want to see this thing uh, uh, continue to progress as you're working towards a reward that you have, uh, that you have chosen uh, to be your goal reward. And then again, another uh, similar kind of, uh, of, of screenshot from a, from a profile showing the user the, the, the achievements that they've already accomplished and then a, uh, a, a notification of a level up. And so kind of this celebratory moment of, hey, you've leveled up, uh, you, are, uh, um, you are progressing, and again, uh, kind of tying in that progression for, for the user. So rewards, once a user is, uh, they have that, that yearn, they've decided that there's something that they're going to be working towards, they're earning their virtual currency, uh, making it very easy for them, of course, to be able to redeem uh, is critical. And here's a screenshot uh, to Cam talked uh, this morning about, uh, about this idea of, of having a call or interaction with his, uh, with his users. And then just the redemption flow, this is where it should be frictionless, it should be easy, we should be encouraging our users to redeem. That's great, it's wonderful payoff, uh, and, uh, and, and it's all just the, the completion of that yearn that they've been uh, that the users had, and then ultimately get social. So it's uh, it's one thing to reward the user for liking. It's another thing to yeah. There's a lot of redaction there. Sorry, my apologies. Uh, it's it's one thing to uh, to reward them for sharing, uh, but but. But carrying that through the entire life cycle of, of a recruitment is really, really critical. So uh, if you cl click on the, uh, or say I come along to a website and I click on the like button on a site, I'm going to get points for that, uh, for that action. But if you come along and you see that link now in my timeline, you click on that, uh, on that link, I'm going to get additional points. But then when you come to the site, you're going to get this special message. And it's going to be tailored specifically to this scenario. And it's going to say, hey, Keith is already part of this rewards program. If you join the rewards program, you're going to get additional points as well. So all that, having that built in and that, rec that recruitment mechanism and rewarding users for that entire uh, progression is really, really critical. And then rinse and repeat. This is my daughter. This is my 15-year-old daughter. This is the day that she, uh, that, that she earned her, uh, her, her driver's permit. And this is the emotion that we're looking for. This is what we want to create. This is that excitement. This is the completion of that, of that journey, of that quest. And, uh, and I, can, I can assure you there was a lot of year in there. And getting that reward was a big payoff moment. And then rinse and repeat. And the results. So, uh, so one of the things that, 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 that we do that's really critical is, is create a baseline, make sure you understand what the performance is in all of your, your key performance indicators uh, for, for the baseline before you do gamification. Slowly iterate, slowly roll out a new, uh, a new implementation, expose it to 5% of your audience, see what works, see what kind of lift you get in all of your KPIs, and then once you have perfected it and gotten it to a point where it's actually working, then begin to scale it out. Uh, and, and I can't underscore that enough, that that is absolutely critical, uh, being able to do that, that deploy, measure, learn, and get into that iteration cycle very, very quickly. By the way, it's a real screenshot from our, uh, from our dashboard, and you can see what the, what the lift is. Uh, and uh, that's all I got. Great. Thank you, Keith. Um, we do have a couple minutes for questions, but I also want to remind you that Keith and the Big Door team are actually out in the lobby, so you can stop by and, and talk to them in more detail. But does anyone have a question right now? So uh, it seems to me you're already measuring a lot of stuff before they register. So do you have any ideas how to uh, work around the European cookie law? 
sorry, being, I didn't catch that last part. That you're the uh, new cookie law in the European Union? Um, so uh, more than I can uh, have time to, to, to get into here, I can tell you that, that, uh, that our, um, we, we work with companies that are, that are based in Europe. We have uh, very expensive lawyers who have guided us through that whole process, uh, and, um, and it's easier to deal with in the US. Probably something that you already know. But, uh, but yeah, happy to talk about that in detail. But yes, definitely giving a lot of thought to that and, and, uh, and, and have a, a our, our, our platform in particular works well with, uh, even within the European constraints. Okay, so just curious, but do you, where do you see this in five years as more and more websites implement this and then we're all just competing with these kind of points and reward systems? Well, What's the next thing I, then? I, I'd hate to be the guy five years from now that doesn't have this. Uh, I can tell you that. Um, and so, yes, there's a bit of an arms race, I think, that, that happens here. But I think it's interesting that uh, there's been some, some new airlines that have launched you know, within, the last, uh, uh, within the last 10, 15 years. And, and a couple of them tried to not have reward programs and, and, uh, and mileage programs. And, uh, and they ultimately realized that, that they have to. And, and I think if you talk to most uh, most uh, companies that have existing purchase-based loyalty programs that have been around for a long time, and I'm just drawing an analogy to that, to that not, not that, it, that it's uh, exactly the same here, but they'll tell you generally two things. One is, we love this thing, we couldn't survive without it, and two, we hate this thing, it's a financial albatross around our neck. Uh, and so uh, I think creating a program and creating uh, uh, the, the next generation of loyalty programs, it's critical that we get the first part of that and we get that right, and the second part that we solve that and we make sure that it doesn't become a financial albatross. And that's one of the things that we really focus on, making sure that, uh, that we can control the costs uh, uh, and give very specific controls uh, into the hands of our partners so that they don't have that same issue. And then I think what happens is if somebody doesn't have that and they don't have uh, that kind of a, of a platform or program, uh, I think it's going to be very difficult to compete with those who do. One more. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Keith. Great talk. Um, so I'm also a fan of the build, measure, learn, feedback loop and the lean startup approach. Uh, but something that we've been hearing uh, multiple speakers say is that if you treat gamification like something that you just bolt on, you can just add a leaderboard or add some mechanic. It's not going to work. It's not going to work at all. So if you have an application that's already built and you want to take advantage of some game mechanics, but to your point, you want to get something out very, very quickly so you can start learning, how do you avoid that being a bolt-on? You know, how, how does, how does uh, your company, Big Door, you know, make it fit the core but do it quickly enough that you can do yeah. it faster? So uh, um, I'm a bit biased in this opinion, so uh, so uh, you know, grant me that. Uh, but but uh, um, we we've built very flexible widgets that can be uh, customized and, uh, and so that they look and feel like an authentic part of your site. They tie into your user authentication. Uh, they, the, the messaging comes from, uh, from you and you control the messaging and the frequency of the messaging. Uh, you have the admin tools to be able to manage all of that. Uh, and so, so it definitely uh, uh, needs to feel like it's an authentic part of the site. With that said, one of the things that we've, uh, that, that we've uh, discovered along the way is that, is that when, when gamification gets, gets too integrated into the site so that it is, as an example, maybe just on one page of the site, that is not going to perform well. Because the idea of gamification is that it is supposed to be a meta layer on top of an existing content or community experience that already exists there, or, or e-commerce experience. And so if you try to, uh, to not have it be bolted on uh, over the top of, of that entire experience, then it is likely going to fail. Uh, and so to some degree, uh, we need to, to make sure that, it, that any gamification implementation, one, doesn't get in the way of that existing content community e-commerce experience, but it enhances every bit of that experience. So as a result, it should be kind of an omnipresent, always there, riding over the top of all of the rest of the experience. And those are the implementations that absolutely work the best. I'm afraid that's all we have time for. Thank you again, Keith. Thank you. Great, very insightful.